Last I checked, I was just three subscribers away from hitting 2,000 subscribers, and I decided I'd start the celebration early with this pair of beautiful B&F Enterprises electronic Nixie tube clocks. These clocks were sold as kits back in the early 1970s. Those few of you that collect clocks probably know that there weren't really that many electronic Nixie tube clocks sold to the public. There were a number of different laboratory clocks made with Nixie tubes in the uh, mid to late 1960s, but there weren't really many sold to consumers just because of the high price of the tubes and the electronics to drive them. By 1972, the seven segment LED display was already out, and the Nixie tubes days were very numbered. They were perhaps the most outdated display technology that was still in production by 1972 since the you know, vacuum fluorescent display had already come out, as well as the Panaplex display, which is also gas-filled, but a little bit more modern. Also a technological dead-end, though. The seven-segment LED display quickly killed those as well. Now this upper clock here I've had since around 2010, so uh, almost 10 years now, and I spent most of that time packed away. About two weeks ago I replaced the two filter capacitors in there, with some fresh ones, as apparently they are potentially a problem. This lower one apparently had a bad filter capacitor and some past person did a really crappy job of replacing it. And another one of these I saw online apparently also had a bad cap that you know blew the um, high voltage rectifier diode, so I definitely wanted to change that. Now this lower one I picked up last year and the only reason I bought it was because I just saw a really good deal on it um, and I thought I could fix it. It was sold as not working and it was really pretty thoroughly not working. Someone, possibly a kid, did a just a total hack job on trying to repair the thing so I had to undo what they did and do it right. Now let's start with the unmodified one here or more or less unmodified. These four controls you see on the front are the only controls this one has. When you set this set run switch to the middle position, which I don't think is original. It'll just hold the display, but it won't let you you know, use any of these set buttons. When you push it all the way over to set, then finally these buttons become uh, active and you can advance the time to what you want. Once you go from 23 to 0, you know, it'll clear out all the other digits as you expect. So you definitely want to set you know, your seconds and minutes first before you set your hours. This lower one has an added reset control. The button was unlabeled, that's uh, my writing there. But hitting that zeroes the clock, even with it in run mode, annoyingly. It could probably be modified to be interlocked on the switch, but I spent literally hours fixing this thing and I called it done once I had it running. Now once you're done setting the clock, you just slide that switch back over to run and it starts counting once more. Those ZM1000R tubes are quite beautiful. They're not the biggest Nixie tubes, but they are very pretty. Much more so than uh, some of the Soviet tubes, particularly the smaller ones. A lot of those used an upside down 2 as a 5 and had a pretty visible uh, anode mesh. Now the lower clock does seem to have more hours on the tubes. There is some darkening of them, but most of this uh, additional darkness is due to the filter being about twice as dark. The tubes aren't that worn out. When I finally got this one working, it actually took a while for everything to fill up. And I thought that second tube was dead, but after about a minute it lit up and uh, it's been okay since been unplugged and plugged back in several times so it seems to be good just worried me for a minute there now this extra control here is is kinda useful at least the first two positions are it's in six digit mode right now when you put it to the middle position cuts the high voltage to everything but keeps the you know timekeeping circuitry in operation then when you push it down to four digit mode it only lights up the first four digits and the uh, colon tube between them 
I guess if you don't like seeing the seconds tick, you can use that, but I like seeing them all lit. A little bit of surge in brightness is from the filter cap being charged up all the way when none of the tubes are putting a load on it. The set run switch on this one has no middle position. I believe that's the original switch. Now this one is set up for 12 hours, but it has the option of being a 24 hour clock. This upper one is 24 hours only. There is no AM PM indicator though, but I guess you don't really need it without an alarm. On the back here are two additional switches that the uh, original builder, I believe, added. You have to set them both up or down. If you set them like this or like this, You'll get kind of weird operation out of the clock. This one sets the you know start point basically of counting. And then this one is uh, like 12 or 24 hour essentially. Um, if you have them like this, it'll do odd things like count up to 13 and then roll over to zero. I'll put this switch on 24 hours and put this one on 12. So you see it went from 13 to 0, and it should go from uh, 12 to 1, like that. Now this case probably should have been grounded. They use a fairly typical filtering arrangement where they've got a, a cap going from both of the phases of the AC line to uh, cabinet ground. So there's about 60 volts on this case, but the current you can pull from it is pretty low. As long as those caps don't fail, this thing is fairly safe, um, but it's not ideal. This is the pass transistor that regulates the voltage for the uh, logic. On both of my clocks and the one I read about online, the voltage was a little bit below 5 volts. It's like 4.9, with it set to the maximum value. There's a, a potentiometer to set it. I believe, or actually I know three terminal regulators were available back then, but um, this clock doesn't use them for whatever reason. So you can see it's got a, yeah, about 7.6 volts across it. So you don't want this to short against something grounded. I had to take that off, clean it up, and re-insulate it. It was just an absolute mess. There's not much to see on the bottom here. I had to replace all four feet on this one as they were uh, quite brittle and one of them was mostly missing. The other one had good feet, so I left that one alone. Luckily I've got a small bag of you know 1970s style rubber feet that I've been putting on things as needed. You can see they have different screws securing the cases. I'm not sure which are original. Unfortunately I don't have the manual for this clock. I would love to see the original manual or at least the schematic for this thing but haven't been able to find it. So if one of you guys uh, knows where to find it I'd love to hear from you. Uh, I've got both of them unplugged. I'll uh, show you the pristine one first and then this modified one. I'll try to make it quick relatively. So I got those four little sheet metal screws out. Now let's see the inside. See those beautiful ZM1000R tubes made by Amprex in Holland. Those are all my notes in there. Here's my replacement low voltage filter cap. It's quite a bit smaller than the original which was about yay long. There's the high voltage filter cap. There's the 5 volt regulator adjustment. You can see it's set to the max. This was apparently a model Z1000. You can see there's space for an additional two integrated circuits, but there's nothing wired to those pads. Now I'm not going to take out the board and flip it around. I've got pictures of that, so I'm going to use those. I don't want to risk any more uh, 
issues with wires breaking off. There's the power transformer there. It's got a 6.3 volt and 1 amp winding and a center tapped 250 volt winding which the clock drops to about 175 to 180 volts. So Stancor PS8416 in case any of you ever need to replace it. This one's fairly neatly soldered. You can see some of the flux has kind of gotten discolored with age, but I haven't had any issues with like erratic operation, so I'm not going to try and clean that off. Because when it's partially cleaned off, it's just like a sticky mess, and it can be really hard to completely remove. So I'm going to leave well enough alone. You can see the tape on the colon separator tubes. I'm kind of tempted to remove it. I'll have to think about that. Alright, here's the second clock, the one with the modifications to it. You can see it's a bit dirtier inside, though most of the original soldering is fairly clean. This board is kind of crappy to be honest. I've worked on other older boards than this that were better. Uh, traces were just peeling off super easily when I was trying to desolder things. They replaced the low voltage filter with a group of three 1000 microfarad caps. It was originally a 3000, and that's a 3300 now. They seem to have used acid core solder on some of the joints they made, so that ate away at the traces here around the uh, you know, bridge rectifier, for example, which I replaced. They had four diodes crudely soldered in there. I don't know if the original builder put this resistor in line there on the center tap, or if it was some later person. The high voltage was you know, right around what it was on the other clock, around 175 volts, so I decided to leave that alone. You can see how the uh, switches there are wired in. I don't want to break off any of those wires though. I had to you know, lift up the board quite a few times, so at the end of the night I had to re-solder these uh, two connections, and some of the other ones are probably a little bit uh, fatigued, but I didn't notice any others that were badly fatigued. So, I stopped there. You can see they use the same color wire for everything, so... It'd be a little annoying if one of these broke. The reason I think the original builder added the, uh, you know, switches here... ...is that they use the exact same wire for the added switches as the original ones. And I don't think the person that tried to change the filter caps... ...would have been clever enough to modify the clock for, you know, 12 and 24 hour selectable operation. The worst thing they did, and it took me a while to find, was that they put replacement diodes in here wrong. The soldering there was decent, so I didn't notice they had modified it at first, and I thought maybe I had a shorted turn in the transformer or something. And I took off all the leads, and that dropped the current back down to, you know, like one, one and a half watts. Um, it was drawing like 60 watts initially. I've got the correct fuse in there now, but when I was testing it, I had a, a half-amp one in. I was obviously only plugging it in very briefly. But yeah, once I had eliminated the transformer being shorted, I started looking at the uh, diode wiring, made sure the low-voltage side was okay, which I had replaced, and then that brought suspicion to this, and I noticed that the soldering was not as clean there. So I'm like, uh-oh, what did this guy do? And I looked at the pictures from the other clock and saw that the diodes uh, were, instead of facing, like, this way, they were facing that way, so they had installed them completely the wrong way around. So it was basically, you know, shorting out that winding. And thankfully it didn't blow the transformer, um, because that's only a 25 milliamp winding. But thankfully, it survived. You can see the integrated circuits there a bit. As with the other clock, I'm not going to take the board out, I'm just going to add in some pictures of it flipped the other way around for you to see. So you can see how uh, dark that filter is. I was originally going to sell this second example, but put a lot of time into fixing it, so I'm kind of leaning towards keeping it now. If I do sell it though, I've got someone in mind for that already. Thanks for watching!
and thanks for subscribing.